welcome back to TPS. Championships aren't won in the offseason. That's why they have a regular season and a postseason. Sometimes a team adds too much talent in a single offseason to the point where people proclaim them as champions before the season begins. Let these starts that a team serve as proof as to why doing that too early can be a big mistake. I'm Justin Frax, and today we present the 10 most overhyped sports teams of all time. At TPS, we post videos every single day. So don't forget to click the subscribe button to subscribe. Then click the notification bell to be notified when we post a new video. And a big shout out to Anshul Bruckman for suggesting this video list. We hope you enjoyed and if you have an idea for a cool video, let us know down in the comments section and you never know we might use one and give you a shout out. Number 10, 2017-18 Oklahoma City Thunder. The Thunder fared better than some expected in the 2016-17 campaign, the first year without Kevin Durant. Russell Westbrook won the league MVP award after leading OKC to 47 wins. But the Thunder wanted to compete for championships again. So GM Sam Presti went all out and added two perennial all-stars. The first move was getting Indiana Pacers star Paul George, who told the team that he would leave in 2018 free agency. Presti got George for Victor Olodipo and Domantis Sabonis. Next up, Presti freed Carmelo Anthony from New York and acquired the Knicks superstar forward for Inez Cantor, Doug McDermott, and a second-round draft choice. With that, Westbrook had two all-star sidekicks. While George and Westbrook turned in phenomenal seasons, Anthony had the worst season of his career. He couldn't get in sync with the offense, and the Thunder only won 48 games. They were eliminated by the fifth-seeded Utah Jazz in the opening round of the playoffs, and OKC would trade Anthony to the Atlanta Hawks in the offseason. So much for being a championship contender, the Thunder couldn't even win a playoff series. Number 9, 2013 Toronto Blue Jays The Blue Jays had been bullied by the Boston Red Sox and New York Yankees in the AL East for two decades, and the front office saw 2013 as the prime opportunity to go all-in. With the Red Sox coming off a last place finish and the Yankees aging rapidly, Toronto sold its stacked farm system for veterans that could complement all-star sluggers Jose Bautista and Edwin Encarnacion. GM Alex Anthopoulos made a blockbuster deal with the Miami Marlins, sending a package of prospects and young players, plus veterans Jeff Mathis and Yunel Escobar. In return, he landed all-star shortstop Jose Reyes, stud pitchers Mark Burley and Josh Johnson, plus John Buck and Emilio Bonifacio. Next, Anthopoulos acquired NL Cy Young winner and knuckleballer R.A. Dickey from the New York Mets for a package of prospects including future star Noah Syndergaard. The Blue Jays instantly became the World Series favorites and they were the overwhelming pick to win the AL East. Well, that totally sucked. None of the Jays' marquee additions really performed well. Dickey turned out to be the one-year wonder many expected. The Jays finished dead last in the AL East with a 74-88 and record. The aging and banged-up Yankees won 85 games. The Red Sox went from worst to the first and won the World Series. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Number 8, 2003 for New York Rangers. The Rangers had missed the playoffs for a franchise record sixth consecutive year in 2003, and general manager Glenn Sather had seen enough. Like any classic New York sports team, Sather threw money at big-named veteran players in hopes of a quick fix. The Rangers had already signed veteran forward Bobby Holy to a five-year $25 million deal the year before. During the 2002-03 season, they reacquired slick Russian scorer Alexei Kovalev. Later that offseason, New York signed Czech forward and 20-goal man Martin Rushinsky. So with Holik, Kovalev, and Rushinsky together for a full year, the Blue Shirts expected a turnaround and a return to the playoffs. And during the 2003-04 season, the Rangers acquired Czech legend Yammer Yager from the Washington Capitals in exchange for Anson Carter. So following all these major additions, how did things turn out for the Blue Shirts? Awful. The Rangers not only missed the playoffs, but they won a pathetic 27, 47, and 8, and had just 69 points, which placed them fourth in the Atlantic Division. Number 7, 2010 San Diego Chargers. The Chargers were going to break through in 2010. This was their year. They won 14 games in 2006, but went one and done. They reached the AFC Championship game in 2007, but lost. They were eliminated in the divisional round over the next two seasons, but it would finally come together in 2010. So they thought. The New England Patriots were rebuilding, and the Indianapolis Colts were going to experience a Super Bowl hangover and struggle a bit in 2010. This was the year of the Chargers, no question about it. The Chargers should have been great. They had the NFL's number one defense, allowing just 271.6 yards per game. They had the NFL's number one offense with 395.6 yards per game. Four players were sent to the Pro Bowl. But this is the Chargers we're talking about, so of course they found a way to blow it. The Chargers had perhaps the worst special teams unit of all time. Their kickers missed some crucial kicks, and they allowed four blocked punt TDs and a trio of kick return scores. 
The Chargers finished 9-7 and and missed the playoffs. The Chargers went 9-7 and and missed the playoffs, even though they had the best offense and defense in the league. So much for being Super Bowl favorites, they couldn't even win a brutally bad AFC West division. Number 6, 2012-13 Los Angeles Lakers With Kobe Bryant's prime years dwindling, the Los Angeles Lakers knew they were running short on time to help him win a sixth championship. So in the 2012 offseason, the Lakers made a blockbuster trade to acquire two-time MVP guard Steve Nash from the Phoenix Suns. The Lakers then acquired Orlando Magic All-Star Center Dwight Howard. And in the blink of an eye, LeBron James Miami Heat had a serious challenger for the NBA championship. Two future Hall of Famers and plus a perennial all-star big man and defensive stalwart. Game over, son. Well, we should have known better. Howard's ego took over and he complained about not getting the ball more. But Kobe was obviously going to be the ball hog despite the added talent around him. As for Nash, he couldn't run a successful pick-and-roll offense under head coach Mike D'Antoni, which they did so well together in Phoenix. The Lakers had virtually no chemistry. In short, they were simply better with Bryant and Pal Gasol doing it alone in years prior. Late in the offseason, Bryant tore his Achilles and went missed the postseason. The Lakers barely qualified with a 45-37 and record. They were swept by the San Antonio Spurs in the opening round. Howard left for Houston in the offseason. Bryant never played another postseason game. Yep, 2013 was officially the end of an era in Lakerland. Number 5, 2008 Dallas Cowboys The Cowboys were coming off an impressive 2007 season in which they led the NFC with 13 wins. Of course, they were upset by the eventual Super Bowl champion, New York Giants, in the divisional round. But Romo was only entering his third year as a starter. So the Cowboys were heavily expected to fare even better in 2008. His star started team featured a trio of future Hall of Famers in Demarcus Ware, Terrell Owens, and Jason Witten. And then all the Cowboys would send six players to the Pro Bowl. So what happened? After a promising 4-1 start, the wheels came off in Big D. Romo suffered a broken pinky and the Cowboys dropped two of the three games that he missed. When he returned, Dallas won three straight games and stood at 8-4 and four entering the final quarter of the season. In the midst of the season, Dallas had acquired Detroit Lions star wide receiver Roy Williams in a trade. The 2006 Pro Bowler only caught 19 passes for 198 yards and one touchdown in 10 games, but the Cowboys proceeded to drop two of their next three games and they faced the Philadelphia Eagles in a win-or-go-home Week 17 contest. The winner would nab a wildcard spot, the loser would go home. The Cowboys fell flat on their faces and were embarrassed 44-6, and their season ended with a disappointing 9-7 record. Number 4, 2011 Boston Red Sox after a rare playoff absence in the 2010 season, the Boston Red Sox went to work in rebuilding a championship team. The front office traded for San Diego Padres all-star slugger and gold glover Adrian Gonzalez before signing Tampa Bay Rays all-star outfielder Carl Crawford to a seven-year contract worth $142 million. The Red Sox were an overwhelming favorite to win the World Series, and they lived up to expectations through the month of August. Gonzalez enjoyed an MVP-like year while Boston's other star veterans like David Ortiz and Jacoby Ellsbury paced the offense although Crawford wound up being a huge bust in Beantown. Boston stood at 83-52 and 52 entering September, building a 1.5-game lead on the Yankees for tops in the AL East. They also led the Tampa Bay Rays by 9.5 games from the AL wildcard spot on September 3rd. Then one of the biggest collapses of all time happened. Boston somehow in some way dropped 18 of their final 24 games, while the Rays got hot and won 6 of their final 7 games. In September, the Red Sox dropped 6 of 7 meetings against the Rays too. In Game 162, the Red Sox blew a lead in the ninth inning and fell to the Baltimore Orioles. On that very same night, the Rays erased a 7-0 deficit and beat the Yankees in extras to clinch the wild card berth. The Red Sox parted ways with manager Terry Francona after the season, GM Theo Epstein left for the Chicago Cubs, and the Red Sox wound up trading Gonzalez and Crawford to the Los Angeles Dodgers in a 2012 blockbuster deal. Number 3, 2003 4 Colorado Avalanche a perennial powerhouse in the Western Conference, the Colorado Avalanche were looking for that third Stanley Cup that could have earned them the dynasty status, having won it all in 96 and 2001. The Avalanche lost legendary goalie Patrick Waugh to retirement in 2003, but the front office made up for it by signing two future Hall of Famer forwards in Paul Correa and Timu Solani, both players who shined together in Anaheim, took pay cuts to join Colorado in hopes of winning a Stanley Cup. The Avs were already loaded with three future Hall of Famers in Joe Sackick, Peter Forsberg, and Rob Blake. They were also carried by reliable stay-at-home blue liner Adam Foote and sniper Milan Hayduke. There was no doubting that the Avalanche were the team to beat entering the season. At least, that's what we thought. Korea only had 11 goals and 36 points on the season, way, way, way below his usual numbers. Ditto for Solani, who only had 16 goals and 32 points. The Avalanche won 40 games registered 100 points, but everybody expected more. That was only good enough for the fourth seed in the West, and the Avalanche wound up being eliminated by the San Jose Sharks in the second round of the playoffs. So much for being a super team, so much for dynasty status. Number 2, 2003 for Los Angeles Lakers 
2004 was really the year of overhyped super teams, eh? The Lakers were shooting for their fourth championship in five years. With Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant, the Lakers were always going to have a chance. But in the 2003 offseason, LA stacked the team with two marquee additions. The first was Utah Jazz icon, two-time MVP, and 14-time All-Star Carl Malone, who wanted the chance to win a title. The Lakers also had a nine-time All-Star point guard Gary Payton, who was nearing the end of his prime and wanted a shot at the title. During the season, the infamous Shaq-Kobe feud reached its breaking point, which led to a toxic locker room environment. Malone missed half the season with a knee injury, and the Lakers went just 56 and 26, which was very disappointing for a team with four future Hall of Famers. Well, the Lakers picked it up and got to the NBA Finals, where they met the heavy underdog Detroit Pistons. Instead of winning their fourth title in five years, the Lakers were completely overwhelmed by Detroit defense led by Ben Wallace, who shut down Shaq. The Pistons shocked the Lakers in five games to win the championship. Shaq requested and received a trade to the Miami Heat in the offseason. Head coach Phil Jackson left the team as well, though he'd return two seasons later. These Lakers were supposed to run away with the championship, but getting embarrassed by an inferior Pistons team made the purple and gold one of the most disappointing and overhyped teams ever. Number 1. 2011 Philadelphia Eagles Because of a resurgent year from Michael Vick, the Philadelphia Eagles won the NFC East in 2010 with a 10-6 record. The Eagles wanted to build on that, so they went all out and threw a bunch of money around in free agency. For insurance sake, the Eagles signed dual-threat QB Vince Young to back up Michael Vick. They landed the top prize of free agency in Pro Bowl cornerback Namdi Asamoah, giving him a five-year deal worth $60 million. The Eagles also signed defensive lineman Colin Jenkins to a five-year deal worth $25 million. He was coming off of a Super Bowl championship with the Green Bay Packers. The Eagles also gave Pro Bowl pass rusher Jason Babin a five-year deal worth around $30 million. Young would later proclaim the Eagles as the dream team. As if the trio of Vic, LaShawn McCoy, and Deshaun Jackson weren't scary enough, the Eagles were primed for a Super Bowl run, except they weren't. Asimov was a major bust of the signing. He was hampered by injuries and was a poor fit in Philly's defensive schemes. Vic, coming off an $100 million extension, couldn't regain that 2010 magic and missed three games. The Eagles lost eight of their first 12 games, though they managed to win out to salvage an 8-8 eight eight record. But a 500 record season was not what the Eagles signed up for. They were supposed to win a Super Bowl for crying out loud. Young's proclamation of the dream team wound up being kind of wrong. When other teams were overhyped and failed miserably, let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.